فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن شرح في كتاب الفرائد البهية في نظم القواعد الفقهية إن شاء الله تعالى Today we're going to take the biography of the author of this book. And what we're also going to do bi idnillah al is we're also going to be speaking about this book that we're studying. The, the book itself. What is it about? Uh, or the structure of the book. We've already spoken about what the book is about, which is Al-Qawaid al fiqhiyah We already dealt with that. But what we're going to be speaking about is the manhaj and the methodology of the author in this book, Al-Qawaid, Al-Faraid Al-Bahiyah, Fi Nadmi Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyah. The third thing that we're also going to be doing, inshallah ta'ala, is starting the uh, uh, book, Bidhun Illahi Al-Kareem, and taking uh, the first part, or the first muqaddima of the book, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to now start with the uh, biography of the author, rahimahullah ta'ala. This kitab, this book, this kitab that we're studying, Al-Faraid uh, Al-Bahiyya Fi Nadmi Qawaid al fiqhiyya is written by Al-Shaykh Abu Bakr Ibn Abi Al-Qasim Ibn Ahmed Ibn Muhammad Al-Ahdal. So his name is Abu Bakr Ibn Abi, Qa- uh, Ibn Abi Al-Qasim Ibn Ahmed Ibn Muhammad Al-Ahdal. And his lineage, Abu Bakr al-Ahdal, his lineage, it finishes at Al-Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. His lineage, yantahi nasabuhu, his lineage finishes at Al-Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. May Allah be pleased with Hussein. And may Allah also be pleased with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Radi Allahu ta'ala anhuma. Abu Bakr ibn Abi Qasim al-Ahdal, rahimahullah, at his time in which he lived, he, it was said that he was munqatu al-Nadir. There was no one like him. He surpassed, in Islamic sciences, he surpassed his peers and he surpassed his uh, he, the people of his time. And he was of high caliber and level وَعَلَى جَانِبِ الْعَظِيمِ مِنَ الْوَرَعِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ He was a very aesthetic. He was one who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excessively and highly. He was an individual known for his knowledge and his zuhd. And his time وَكَانَتْ أَوْقَاتُ مَعْمُورَةَ بِالذِّكْرِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ And his time was filled up with worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was an individual who was also known for spreading knowledge, nashur al-ilm, to spread and to educate the people. And to benefit from his time with coming without, with righteous actions. وَتَوْزِيعُ الْوَقْتِ عَلَى الْأَعْمَالِ الصَّالِحَةِ He categorized and he divided his time to do acts of worship. Such as التدريسو, to educate and to teach the people. He had time to give fatwa and answer people's questions. And other than that, it was said, the signs of nobility and the sign of Passion for knowledge, it could, it could be seen in him at a very young age. It was apparent on him. And it was on his limbs and his face. The passion and love that he had for knowledge. He 
his mum's maternal uncle, Abu Bakr ibn Abil Qasim, Al Ahdal, his mum's maternal uncle, whose name is, who's very well known as a Sayyidul Wali, whose name is Ahmed ibn Umar Al Ahdal. Ahmed ibn Umar Al Ahdal. Ahmed ibn Umar Al Ahdal, who was the who was the uncle of his mom. He would refer to Abu Bakr, he would refer to him as what? Bil Faqih al Alim. As a young kid, a very young kid, he would say to him, the Faqih, the Alim, at a very young age. Um, the author, Al Shaykh Abi Bakr ibn Abil Qasim al Ahdal, the author of this book that we're studying, he already spoke about his life. He spoke about himself. And he has, he's written a book about his own biography. So he, we have his autobiography, which is known as Nafhatul Handal, in which he speaks about, in which he speaks about his, himself. He mentions that he was born, he was born 984. 980, 84, approximately. <laughs> and he was born in the, the province of Hudayda. Rahimahullah. But when the year was 988, which is four years after his birth, in the month of Dil Hijjah, his father took him to a village known as Salama. And at that age, age four years of age, he says about himself, فَتَعَلَّمْتُ بِهَا Quran. I learned the Quran. And he said, I also memorized it. The age four and five. He had memorized the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, وَلَمَّا أَكْمَلْتُ When I had finished the memorization of the Qur'an, أَمَرَنِ الْوَالِدْ My father commanded me بِتَعْلِيمِ To teach my sisters and my brothers. He, my father told me, teach your brothers and sisters. And he says, فَاشْتَغَلْتُ I became busy بِتَعْلِيمِ him By teaching them. And he used to teach them. Now this shows us, my beloved brothers and sisters, that the first step that a student of knowledge or a young kid should take when embarking on learning the religion is to memorize the book of Allah. That is the first thing a person should take. And the Quran, the place where it resides and the place where it lives is not in papers and it is not inside books. That is not the original place of the Quran. The Qur'an's original place is the heart. And that's where it resides and that's where it should be. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Jibreel came to him, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به Do not move your tongue in trying to hasten to memorize the Qur'an. Don't do that. إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ It is upon us to compile the Qur'an in your heart. So in other words, when this Qur'an came from Allah, it came to Jibreel. Jibreel did not write it anywhere. Jibreel read it unto our Prophet. And our Prophet read it unto his companions. And his companions read it unto... So it was passed on like that. That is why Allah says in the Qur'an, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ Allah is saying that the Qur'an's place is where? The qalb, the heart. In another place Allah says بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُ الْعِلْمِ The Qur'an, it is the thing that is compiled and it is placed in the hearts of the people of knowledge. So that the individual realizes that if he wants to seek knowledge and he wants to learn the religion of Allah, it is necessary that you memorize the book of Allah and that you give importance to memorizing it. 
لأن my beloved brothers and sisters من ضيع القرآن anyone who forsakes the Quran فلما سواه أضيع then for sure he's going to forsake anything other than it if you haven't taken time out to memorize the book of Allah the Quran and you haven't given importance to it then definitely you will not give importance to anything other than it why? because the status of the Quran is higher than the status of any individual speech. Any person who ever speaks his speech is insignificant in comparison to the speech of Allah. And the ulama they say, Sharaful ilmi bi sharafil ma'lumi. The honor of a knowledge is connected to the honor of what you're who who is it talking about and who is what is it dealing with. The honor of the Quran is greater than anything. The reason why is because this is the speech and the kalam of Allah. And the same way Allah is higher than his creation, so is his speech higher than the speech of the creation speech. So for you to memorize the Quran should be given presence over everything else. When you read, when you read the tarajum and uh, the tarjama of uh, the ulama and the people of knowledge, you'll always see Hafid al-Qur'an, he memorized the Qur'an, he memorized, this is, it is just recently become a kind of lifestyle or a person becomes a student of knowledge without even memorizing the Qur'an. It's become the norm. So it is important that a person does that. So Abu Bakr ibn Abil Qasim, al-Ahdar rahimahullah, his father, made him memorize the Qur'an. And also the other thing that we take from the life of this great noble imam or this great man of knowledge is that when he memorized the Qur'an, he also was teaching it. And this is one of the ways to keep knowledge, <coughs> that you pass it on and that you educate your community. You, take, you bring it back to the community again. It is one of the ways to make sure you don't lose your knowledge. That is one of the ways to keep it. Just as implementing it is the same. When you implement a knowledge, it will also stay with you. It will remain with you. It will be yours. Then he goes on to say in, وَأَلْهَمْتُ I made, or the thought came to my heart, and I desired, I wanted to, um, to write <coughs> the stories that took place any story that I saw, he said, I wrote them, I rewrote them. Any book, story book that I saw, he said, I, I would rewrite them. And the Qasidas, poetries and things like that, he said, I will rewrite them. What was the intent for him to do that? خطي, so I had a good handwriting. So my handwriting became good. Which is what, brothers? As a kid, as a, as a, as a young person who's growing, the child is taught to memorize and he's taught to read and write. And people, my beloved brothers and sisters, they kind of belittle the science of writing. Khat is one of the fields of the language, the Arabic language. It's from the 12 subjects. You know the 12 sciences of the Lugh al arabiyya One of it is Al-Khat. Qawa'id al-Imla. Dictation and how to write. A lot of people, they don't go and they don't learn how to write. And they don't even know it. Their writing skills are terrible. And it's a science. As Nahwa is a science, and Sarf is a science, and Balaga is three types. Ilmul Bayana, Ilmul Badi'a, and Ilmul Ma'ani. Qawa'idul Imla is one of those as well. Just like Khitaba, speech, and eloquency, in the, or the Khutbah, is a science in the Arabic language. You study it. Qawa'idul Imla is also one of those subjects that you study. So he said, I studied it. How to write. He said, I used to copy and write. وَلِذَلِكَ some scholars, they just, they just learn and they study the Rasmul Mus'haf. How the Qur'an is written in the Mus'haf. And how it's written like that. You memorize it. Like some of the Hufar, they say, don't. If you're half and you memorize the Qur'an, still don't stop looking at the Mus'haf. Because you're going to keep the Rasm, the way it's written with you. It's important. As it's important to memorize it, it's also to rem it's good to memorize the rasm of the Mus'haf. Back at the time of the Salaf, huh, the Hivd was with Hivd of the Rasm. 
the way it's written. They can rewrite the Mus'haf again. Then he said, ثُمَّ أَدْخَلَنِي وَالِدِي My father then sent me to the city, of the place of Zabid. I went to the place called Zabid. لِطَلَبِ الْعِلْمَ To gain knowledge. Now what's amazing is that memorizing the Qur'an, he didn't add it to the seeking knowledge. And that's, a, that's, something, that's, that's something you need to do regardless. That's something you should have prior to seeking knowledge. So he now then says, ilm. Then I embarked on gaining knowledge. And then he goes, فَكَانَ أَوَّلُ طَلَبِي فِي الْفِقْهِ The first thing that I went after to gain knowledge in is al-fiqh. And from the hand of who? Muhammad ibn Abbas. So the first thing he learned was what? Al-fiqh. And the second one was, he said, nahu, And he said, I embarked on grammar. From his Sheikh Muhammad ibn Yahya. <coughs> so he's a Shafi'i al-Madhab. The author of this book, the fiqh that he learned was fiqh al-Shafi'i. Li'anna Yemen is from the countries who take on the Shafi'i Madhab. And then he goes on to, this, on, to, on to saying, ثُمَّ إِنَّ الْوَالِدْ أَرَادَ تَزْوِيجِي Then my father wanted to marry me off. My father, he wanted to marry me off. And then he says, this became an obstacle for me. Marriage became an obstacle for me. Why? Because he said, I tasted the sweetness of knowledge. But when I got married, فَلَمَّا تَزَوَّجْتُ اشْتَغَلَ خَاطِرِي When I got married, my mind, it got, pre it got occupied. With what? بِأَمْرِ زوجة, The rights and the responsibilities of the wife. وَمُرَعَاتِ حُقُوقِهَا And to observe her rights and what she deserves from me. That are obligatory. So he said, this became a problem for me. He said, to the extent... That he busied me نحو ستة سنين Six years of my life Six years I got busy with my wife And her responsibilities And the, the things that I had to do for her <coughs> Pay attention what did, he, what did it busy him from? Knowledge But look what he said لكني بات في هذه المدة At this particular period of time لم أترك التحصيل والتعليق والمطالعة I was still reading Oh, it doesn't mean I stopped learning in totality. I was doing talaa. I was doing taqliqat and some points and benefits. I was doing my little explanations of books here and there. ومذاكرتي and revision. With what? With who? من ألقاه من الطلبة. Any student I can meet, come. Let's revise discussions about topics. He said I would do that. And he said, why would he do that for? لِمَا تَمَكَّنَ فِي قَلْبِ مِنْ مَحَبَّةِ الْعِلْمِ The reason why, even though I was busy with my wife and her responsibilities and everything, but because I had passion and love for knowledge, and I really loved ilm, I could still not stop fully, except writing and reading and benefits. and I never left that. And revising with students of knowledge, I was doing this. And this, my beloved brothers, show us some, so shows us something, something, and that is, the person succeeds when it comes to knowledge if he has passion and love for it. The thing that sparks from love is what does not stop from you. It's addiction. It's your love. You can't stop, even if you wanted to. You can't make yourself stop it. It's become like that for you. A person who wants to gain knowledge has to be like that. He has to love it. If he's not in love of it, if he's not in love of it, then he doesn't gain, he doesn't reach far with it. He doesn't what? He doesn't go far with it. So look at, even that though there are responsibilities on his shoulders regarding his wife and the worldly affairs are preoccupying his mind, but because that love is sparking from his heart, he could not stop but want to read and write. Look what he then said. Um, then I grabbed myself The nasiya is the front of your hair The tip, the beginning So I grabbed my Meaning I, I got hold of my affairs 
Because the nasiya is the beginning of your. In other words, I got hold of my affairs. I got, I grabbed my affairs again, put it back into my own hands. In what? Ila tajdid talab ibaat al rabbani to re renew my initiative in going to gain knowledge. And he said, this was something Allah Taala nurtured in me. He brought it out of me. I made my mind up. And then he goes on to mentioning who he read on. He read on uh, uh, his teacher, Muhammad bin Burhan al-Mahalli. And, and then he said, I went to Zabid and I read on uh, uh, Sheikh Ali bin Ab Abbas. And then others, many ulama, over 30 of them. He went and he read on each and every one of them. Subjects, this and that and all of it. The author has so many books. There's a lot of mu'allafat, books that he's written. He has a nadm al-tahrir, which is in fiqh. He has a nadm in waraqat. He has a nadm in nukhbat al-fikr. He has a nadm in other fields of the religion. He's very well known for his nadm. One of the books that he's written is called At-Taliq al-Madbut Fi Ma'liwudu Kal-Ghusli Min al-Shurut Something like that. He was an individual known for his poetry. He's an individual who Allah Taala opened for him the ability to <coughs> poetry. This is something Allah gave him Subhanahu Wa Taala. And one of the poetries that he said, and there are many, but I think this one is very beneficial. That I mention it um, because of the beauty and the rel relevance of this time for us. He goes in this poetry, in kunta tatlubu fi darayni tafdilan. وتبغي من مليك الكون تكميلا داوم على العلم والفعل الجميل تنل ذكرا جميلا وتكميلا وتوصيلا He said if you are looking for in this world and in the hereafter virtue you are looking for virtue in this world and in the hereafter وتبتغي and you are also looking for من مليك الكون the lord of this universe الله تبارك وتعالى you're looking from him what Takmeel and to be a complete person, a person who doesn't have no deficiency. If you're looking for that, so you're looking for virtue in this world and in the hereafter. You're also looking to be a person who is complete, who doesn't have no deficiency. Dawim ala al Be consistent on knowledge. And be one who sticks to gaining knowledge. Unstop, just keep going. Min al mahbarati ila al makbara. From the cradle to the grave. Carry on. Dawim ala al-ilm wal fi'l al-jamili and actions which are good. Be consistent in that. Tanal you will gain. What will you gain? Dikran jamilan wa takmilan wa tawsila. You're going to gain what? You're going to gain good remembrance after you die. Wa takmilan and you're going to reach completeness. You're going to be a complete person. Wa tawsilan and you're going to have a strong bond with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. فَطْلُبْهُ Gain and seek knowledge. عَلَى تَحْصِيلِ أَبَدًا For as long as you ever live. Do that. وَقُمْ And stand up. بِتَأْلِيفِ Authoring in knowledge. Writing in knowledge. إِنْ حُزْدَ إِنْ حُزْدَ إِنْ حُزْدَ تَأْهِيلًا إِنْ حُزْدَ تَأْهِيلًا if you think and you see in yourself that you have the, the instruments with you, that you're, the, you're entitled to author, you have the knowledge and you have the grounds and you have the bases, then write. وَأَنْفِقِ الْعُمْرَةِ And also spend your life في تحقيق حاصله in making sure that you're seeking it correctly. وَعْمُرْ بِهِ الدَّهْرَ And fill up your time تدوين وتحصيلا in authoring and writing and also in gaining knowledge. So he was a person who was like that. These lines of poetry and what he's advising you is what he was. <coughs> From the books that he's written is this book that we have right now which is الفرائد البهية في نظم قواعد الفقية and he called it this name. He himself called it this name. He died, rahimahullah ta'ala, um, in the middle of a Sunday. He died fi muntasafi nahari al-ahad, the middle, middle 
of a Sunday. الثالث جباد الآخرة on the third of جباد الآخرة. The year was سنة خمس وثلاثين وألف. One thousand and thirty-five. So he was fifty-one years of age. He was only fifty-one years of age. Very young. Very young. The name Al-Ahdal, what does it mean? The name Al-Ahdal, the way it's read is بِفَتْحِ الْهَمْزَةِ وَسُكُونِ الْهَاءِ وَفَتْحِ الْمُهْمَلَةِ This is that dabd and that writing is what Al-Yafi'i mentions in his kitab, شرح المحاسنة. That's how it's read, it's Al-Ahdal. Um, what does it mean? It means الأدنى الأقرب. It's the cl ahdal means something that's close. So something that's close. Something that's very close to you. Without you call the Arabs, they say, Hadal al Ghusnu ida dana wa karub. Walana bi thamaratihi. When the tree, the, 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 the branches, they go down. Are you with me? And the fruits are very close to the ground. The Arabs, they say that the branches, the ghusn, the branches, has become close. So they use the word, the word al-ahdal. The reason why they use it for the shaykh, rahimahullah, was because he was min kamal tawadu'. He was a very humility. You see, uh, very humble and humility was with the shaykh, rahimahullah. So it was very you know, humility comes with, you know, the idea of going down and just you know, a person who is not, his head, the arrogance has that kind of like chest is out, nose is up, whereas tawadu tends to have the, the opposite to that. Also, some scholars, they say, no, 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 al-ahdal means, uh, oh, sorry, the word ahdal was used for him is because لِأَنَّهُ دَلَّ لِأَنَّهُ إِلَى الْإِلَاهِ دَلَّ Because this man has brought the people closer to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And he has, this is why this name was uh, in the family. Or he was known as Al-Ahdal. Rahimahullah. Um, brothers, that is the biography of the author uh, of this book that we're studying right now. That is his bi uh, biography. Inshallah, now, we're going to take a bit about the book. We're going to be taking a bit about the book that we're studying. This book that we're studying as I said, it's called Al Faraid Al Bahiyya Fi Al Qawaid Al Fiqhiyya. This particular book is one of the books that are written in to serve. It is written to serve the science of what? Al-Fiqh. So in other words, when you're studying this book, Al-Fara'id Al-Bahiyya Fi Nadmi Qawa'id Al-Fiqhiyya, you are going to come out with an ability to be solid and to be strong in Fiqh. In other words, you're going to have what is known as what? Malak Al-Fiqhiyya. So I need to mention this point. It's very important. If you want, my brothers and sisters who are listening, if you want to have malaka fiqhiyah, malaka fiqhiyah means what? Malaka is something that is, that the person has become rooted in something, solidified. If you want to have that ability in fiqh and you want to be very strong and very tough and solidified, there are four things that you have to have. And inshallah ta'ala, this topic of malaka fiqhiyah, kayfiyatu, uh, uh, the way to become a strong person of fiqh. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to make it a topic and I'm going to speak about it. But the first thing is that the person studies a book. Books that are known as mutun fiqhiyah, you know the books. Like for example, the Hanbali person would study the Kitab Az-Zad. The Kitab Az-Zad Al-Mustaqni' which is a Hanbali book. Uh, a, a Maliki person would study the Kitab Mukhtasar al-Khalil. Are you with me? And a Shafi'i would probably study a book written in, uh, written by Imam Nawi al-Minhaj, by Imam Nawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. 